Welcome to Healing Generations, a podcast creating a dialogue uplifting the importance of healing, strengthening, and supporting our communities, and that addresses the disparities and inequities in communities of color. Healing Generations is brought to you by the Healing Generations Institute, a collaborative initiative of the National Compadres Network and the Brotherhood of Elders. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on our new releases. Okay, blessings to you all. Uh, this is Jerry Teo from the Healing uh, Generations podcast, and we'd like to welcome you back to a, another uh, week of, of, uh, of dialogue, of discussion, of inquiry, reflection, uh, this journey that we explore, you know, the, the medicine of our ancestors, of people of all ways, of all roots, of, of all cultures. And at the same time, we're on this journey really to heal uh, ourselves and heal generations and heal ancestors and heal our communities so that we can come together as one. In my language, we call it Nkloke Nawake, that interconnected sacredness. And But what we know is that that medicine uh, comes in many, many different ways. You know, it comes with teachings, it comes with prayer, it comes with ceremony, it comes with tradition, it comes through art, it comes through music. And and it comes in many, many ways. And, and we're really blessed to uh, to uh, continue this dialogue that we we started last week with Baba Moshe, uh, who is a, an elder, a wisdom keeper, um, a really community leader, but actually international um, musician. Uh, he, he makes music as well and makes instruments, and I think he does everything related to music. And but also the journeys that he's taken, that he started sharing with us last time about the many journey he's taken across the world and the many babas and and master musicians that he's been able to sit with and learn from. And now as a baba and as an elder, he's teaching many, many generations. So I want to welcome you, Baba, uh, today again and you know, give you an opportunity just to welcome people again um, this week. <clears throat> well, thank you, uh, Maestro, Terry. Uh, anyway, all is good. Uh, appreciate being back on the scene again. Um, and, you know, it's been a minute, but uh, we here together and still playing music and, and trying to, you know, get ourselves uh, connected. I think I left off uh, saying something about the drum and we should have a drum in every household. Yeah. And I mean, one thing about the drum is very friendly. Uh, everybody can play. You don't have to go buy a child's drum. You don't have to go buy a drum for... Any Pacific uh, individual is just a drum. The drum, a child can stand up and play a drum. Uh, they can sit in a chair and play a drum. An adult can sit in a chair and play a drum or stand up and play a drum, depending on how tall you are. It doesn't have to be so big or so small, but the fact that it's there. So when guests come, usually, I don't care if they walk by it and hit it one time, it's going to affect them. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know how it, it, it goes. People be coming by the crib, the only thing about it, you have to give them knowledge because they don't know that it's a sacred instrument. Mm. So sometimes they may have a cup of coffee. They want to sit it on the drum. They may have a Coca-Cola. They want to sit it on the drum. Uh, they may have a smoothie. They want to sit it on the drum. Uh, something that they, a jacket, lay it on the drum. My teachers would beat your, you know what? <laughs> if they see you leaning on it, you got just your drum and they don't even want you to lean on it. Mm. They'll tell you, sit up straight, Boshe. You know, we don't lean on drums. You know, uh, we don't set our jackets on drums. We respect instruments because it's very sacred. Because if you had any idea what our ancestors went through when they tried to reinstate the drum into the culture, that's some beautiful stuff, man. That's, mm. that's crazy. So, I mean, when you think about all that has happened to not just uh, African people, all indigenous people mm. coming from different lands, they always was something taken away from them because that kept them unified and organized. So basically, you know, the drum is really uh, the heartbeat. Uh, it, it, it definitely saved my life. And mm. then I began to, uh, I have always worked with children because I have four children of my own. So mm. I have always worked with children. And before I had children, I was working with children. Mm -hmm. But I continue even today working with youth, but not just any one age group, all age groups. 
So I get these little ones. They could be, they're not even in, in, in school yet. They're three or four years old. But what that does for them and those teachers, they always come into me saying, please don't stop coming to this class. Mm. The fact that you came, little uh, Raul is just so different. And when they mm. know you coming, they change. They was running around, mm. not listening to us, not taking care of what they're supposed to, not cleaning up their mess. But once you tell them, Baba Moshe is coming, he's going to be bringing the drums today. The room is clean. Everybody's ready <laughs> to go. Everybody's sitting in a circle with discipline. And then we use the drum as a teaching tool to show mm. them this drum is unity. It's, uh. it's, it's, it's family. It's togetherness. We use this drum to bring us together, to help the ones that's, that's, that's underserved, to share with the one that don't have, to give an opportunity for someone that didn't have the opportunity, to be patient with those that can't get the rhythm like you got it, to understand that rhythm is like this. If it's one person that's playing music and something ain't right, it's not right for everybody. Mm. We all got to be together. So what, did that, what does that mean? that we have a responsibility to give and to give our input to make the thing work and the magic come through because we can't leave anybody behind. Everybody has to be a part of this great opportunity. So I've worked with a lot of schools, uh, Adventures in Music in San Francisco. Uh, you know, that was in the you know, late 90s and so forth. I have did stuff with um, Black Nativity, Mountain View in California, uh, the Dimensions Dance Theater here at the Malunga Center where I am have my office at, uh, the Rites of Passage programs, uh, various middle schools, uh, Sh Shabot Elementary Schools, uh, Hillcrest, uh, Black uh, History North Workshop Facilitator, uh, just different kinds of programs that uh, I've been a part of and I'm still a part of. And recently I got a grant to do a program that was bringing awareness to the homelessness and the disparities mm. around the gentrification and stuff that's going on in Oakland. So therefore, the people gave me the grant. They didn't tell me what to do. They just said, we want to make sure that we bring awareness around these struggles we have. So mm. down here at the Malunga Center, we downtown Oakland, they're building a lot of buildings. They're taking away the park. They're covering up the murals. Uh, a lot of homelessness is everywhere. So things are shifting a little bit. Things mm -hmm. are shifting a little bit. We're not only working with the youth and the young men. We're also now starting to branch out into drum for a cause that's a little bit different. Because when I was coming up, we wasn't really drumming for uh, those that are despair and all that and on that level. Mm -hmm. Now it's changing because they need support right. and they need the drum to, to bring that, that attention to this struggle. And the drum mm -hmm. amplifies it. It's like a, being an amplifier. It amplifies everything. So if mm -hmm. you're speaking, you have a drum in your, your marches, the people pay attention. They hit a drum before they see the people. You hit a drum for miles before you see the people. So we just did this program and we didn't finish it yet. It was supposed to finish. In the end of June, it was March 12th or around that they closed the center because of the COVID-19. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we didn't get a chance to actually finish the program, but I would begin to invite other artists to come in and teach, not only drumming, but dance classes. And I offered it all for free. Mm. I didn't have to do that. They didn't ask me to do that, but I did. I offered it all for free. It was well attended. And it's well documented. And um, so then, you know, we're just doing different things to try to bring about awareness around the struggles. Yeah, you know, um, people do not realize the historical sense of the drum in terms of uh, keeping people together, keeping that unity together, especially when things were tough especially when things are hard. I, I remember, you know, growing up in Compton, you know, music was the center of everything. I mean, even when, especially when you had hard times, play some music because that, it lightens your load. It, it gives you a rhythm. It takes you out of that funk. 
it, it, you know, it, it takes you to a different place. And even those people that were struggling, you know, I mean, even some of the elders that could barely walk, man, you know, that, that music started popping. They, they start moving in their chair. You know what I mean? So, so there's, this, there's something about, you know, that rhythm, that beat, you know, that vibration, you know, and, and, um, and I think, you know, um, you know, I saw it, like I said, when we were at, uh, up at camp, I saw it with the young people, you know. But one of the things that was interesting to me that I saw when you brought these young people together, because you're right, when they see the drum, they want to walk by and hit it, you know. And I saw you put those drums in the middle. And as these youngsters came in, they want to come, you said, no, 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 sit down, wait a minute. And you, and you, you sat them down first to teach them about the sacredness of the drum before they could play it. And, and to me, that was such a powerful lesson about teaching young men that you don't just grab something, you don't just hit something, you don't just play something. You must, first of all, recognize the sacredness. And that, you know, when you did that, it was like, whoa, you know, that's, that's a human relations lesson. That's a relationship about, about sacred relationships with partners. You don't just go and touch somebody. You don't just go and grab somebody. You, you know, you had to recognize the sacredness of that. And, and so it, it was really powerful to see you, how you did that. And, and you didn't allow these young people to even take the drum and put it in front of them till they understood the sacredness. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that because, you know, I, I, I saw it and, and, you know, it wasn't just playing drums. There were so many teachings that you gave you know, about even just recognizing the sacredness of that drum and the relationship that you have to have with the drum before you put your hands on it. Well, you know, uh, Maestro is one thing that I was taught a lot when we were dealing with drums is the fact that it's like Trinity, like a uh, pyramid or what have you. Uh, you got your spirit, you have the spirit of the animal, and you have the spirit of the tree. Mm. How can you disrespect that? I mean, mm. you use an animal skin. You use a tree that grows that gives you the things that you need to sustain yourself. And you have your spirit. And mm. when you understand that those three all work together in harmony and you can give them a lesson in that, it can change a lot of, lot of things. Um, mm. When I go to the schools and the teachers say, come to my classroom, I want to just give you a feel of what my classroom is like. Kids are running, about to climb the walls, swinging <laughs> off of the, the ceilings, um, you know, coming up to you, almost want to hit you. And, you know, they don't even know you. They're just off the chain. Then they say, you think you could do something with this, Baba Moshe? And I say, sure. So I go home and I start putting my program together. Okay, so maybe one of the first things I do is sit them down, start to talking to them, and you'll see some hyphy, hyper little ones, and you may get a chance to get them to come. I tell you what, you know, feel your heart. I tell them, take your hand, put it on your heart. Mm. And I say, everybody, be quiet. And they feel this boom, boom. I say, can you feel that heart? Yes. Mm. I say, okay, the heartbeat that you have right here is just like the heartbeat of this instrument right here. So I'm going to play a rhythm, and I'm going to play a rhythm that's going to emulate your heartbeat, mm -hmm. and why they be, and, and remember, it's kind of like a, a like a, a way we used to teach in our culture, like they use the word mindfulness now, mm -hmm. but it was that way before, yeah. before that word even was used. We were using these techniques to bring ourselves to the present where we are right now, instead of being in our heads and being into who did what. Who said what? And I didn't get my chance and all that. You just mm -hmm. be, be where you are. So I give them this beat. I play. And they say, oh, that's like my heartbeat. And then I tell them, okay, we're going to change it up now. I'll tell them, okay, let's run around the room for a minute. <laughs> we run around the room, which they love that. I said, now mm -hmm. everybody sit down and be still, not feel your heartbeat. It's going doom, 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 doom. <laughs> and then they say, oh man, my heartbeat fell. I said, no, I'm going to play a rhythm like that. I go, doom, 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 do
doom, doom, cha. And they say, that's the same rhythm. I say, yes, I'm showing you the connection. Same with us playing. We can play a rhythm slow. If we want to calm the energy, or we can play some hyper, and we could be enjoying it from a different perspective. So we're just trying to use different things to get them to understand vibration. Then we bring out the bells. Sometimes mm -hmm. I play my flutes. And then I express the, the use of the air, the oxygen, and how we're using mm -hmm. that to bring that into that instrument. You know, how the bells, the metal come from the earth. And we have to respect Mother Earth. And we're just teaching these different things. So every time you keep sharing with them and then you sit them down in the classroom and then you start making instruments with them. I make shaker days with them. I make shakers with them. I make claves with them. And then they see, and we also do a program called Everything But The Kitchen Sink. And that means we don't, we don't go, we just go in our house. And I tell everybody, go home. Bring me something that we can make some music with. They come with, and I told them, don't bring no plastic. Bring some metal. Bring something wood. So they come with two wooden spoons. They come with the pet pots and pans. And we create music mm -hmm. with all these instruments they brought from the house. Mm -hmm. And then what I do, I go get, go down to the, the, the salvage place and get a kitchen sink. <laughs> I get a kitchen sink with all this metal, these metal sinks with the pipes still on them. And I take two sticks. And the big parts sound like, tum, 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 tum. and the other one, ding, ding, ding. All these places got music. So I'm mm. showing them, now, see, we can make music out of anything. So yeah. take your sticks, take your sticks. You're going to play this rhythm on the bass. You're going to play on this big pipe. You're going to play on this little pipe. You're going to play on the, the, the faucet. You're going to play on this, and then that's why we do it. And we have shows like that where we open up the curtains, and the people, all they see is this kitchen sink, and they wonder, what the hell's going on? <laughs> really, they, they say kitchen sink. So what we do, we come out, all the children come out with the instruments they made. Either they, they got a coffee can that we put some rocks in, and we put fabric around them, we paint them. Either they got some sticks from the house, or they got a pan or whatever, and we start playing. The next thing you know, that's how we open up our show. Mm. Plan things, or you know, so it teaches you a lot of different things. Recycling, understanding what the environment, what's in the environment, how can we reuse things from the environment. See, drumming, man, that's this drumming, it got me crazy, bro. Mm. It's, 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 I'm, I'm so thankful. I'm sitting in my spot right now. And when I leave the house and come here, I'm, 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 I'm in another world, man. Mm. It's, it's just, it's so many organic properties here. I don't mm. deal with nothing fake here. In the same way I teach the children, bring me some organic materials and we, I'm going to show you what we could do with them. So wow. we, we're living around all this around us, but it's, things are changing, Maestro. Things are mm. changing. That's why I said we got to get to the young ones a little bit more because Yes, it's okay to go to a camp or go somewhere and you see these guys coming from Compton and Long Beach and Sacramento and Oakland, and they have a little edge to them, and they, they've been a part of some things that we already know about, and we ain't judging them, but we're trying to give them some other perspective. But just what if? A lot of them was like me. I didn't have no daddy, but the OGs took me in. Back to that, that story. Mm -hmm. So we the OGs now. So yeah. if somebody takes in some kids, and show them some things, like grandkids, whatever, they get a good start. So when they get to junior high school, yeah, they're going to go and do some things. But they know they've been taught some good stuff, and they got something to refer to. So right. I think that, um, you know, that my work with children is still going on. It hasn't stopped. I'm doing Zoom classes with kids. Parents calling me, and I didn't even reach out to them. They reached out to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. reach out to anybody about no class. Right. Moshe, can you teach so-and-so? And then they came up and bought drums. So I think it all works itself out. Plus, it's entrepreneur stuff that's involved with it. You learn how to be self-sufficient, to be uh, control of your own destiny, because you can make something, you can do something, even if you could draw something, make a hat, anything. So anyway...
you know, just mm, you know. That, that's beautiful. You know, we're going to take a moment to listen to to some of this music that uh, Baba Moshe is talking about because, you know, the the rhythms, um, you know, and I'm going to just uh, <laughs> challenge the audience to to uh, to allow the rhythms to to penetrate you because you know the rhythms and the drums. And even then, we can just even talk and even about the chanting, the the singing, you know that uh, that I'm sure as you traveled, you heard as well. So let's just take a moment and listen to this uh, this piece right here, and see if you can connect to it. See if you, as the audience, can connect, and and as Baba Moshe did with the young kids, connect with their heart. See if you can connect with your heart just a, a little bit by listening to this uh, to this beat and this song and this rhythm. So as we see, you know, in 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 music, that it it really can stimulate. It's 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 a part of who we are, you know. And and um, you know, and and what we don't realize, you know, I mean, we could we could spend hours with Baba Moshe because there's so much so much to share. But but another one of the teachings that I saw that I heard you give uh, when you were working with these young people in the drums is you talked about the the, the if you will, I, th- I think you said the female drum, the mama drum, and then the Father, I mean, and the child drum, that there were different drums and they had a relationship with each other. You know, um, can you talk about that? Because I don't think people understand the the real significance and and the story, the narrative, and you know, that in our history and in our culture, there it's really about relationship and the interconnection of the rhythms as well. Yes, for sure. You know, like going back, and I'll go back and then come up. Oh, yeah. When I was coming up as a young man. Even before, man, we were always taught that women shouldn't play drums. Mm. It was just, it was a known fact that women don't play drums. They can dance, they can sing, they can cook, they can do whatever. And I would say that I, I'd always wondered what was that all about? I couldn't really quite understand that from a, a perspective that it made sense. But they always said women can drum. So it was only till recently, really, the women started really playing drums and being respected as such, even in Africa and places like that. Now, they do have societies in Africa where the women play drums with themselves in their own little mm-hmm. network. Usually, they usually are older in most cases. They are no longer bearing children in most cases mm-hmm. from what I've seen. And they're at another level in life, and they have their own societies that they play drums with. And then I could even mm-hmm. share some of those sounds with you, with the audience, if, if there's a possibility of moving forward. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. we have different drum styles. Okay, let's go back to the trip going to Gambia when I was mm-hmm. meeting my teacher, Fabakari Baji. They were playing the Kuteros. Mm. And the Kutero had three drums. The Kutero had the Kutiriba, was this father drum. You see Ba, like, you know, like Baba. Mm-hmm. They have the Kutiri Ba. That was the, 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 the daddy drum. And, it's the, and it, is, it isn't the deepest bass, 
but it's the most dominant bass. Mm. It's, the, it's the largest head on the drum. Then they had the Kutiro and Dingo, which is the baby. That baby drum follows the daddy when they play. Everything mm. that, that the Kutiri Ba plays, the Kutiri and Dingo follows the daddy, the Kutiri Ba. Mm. Then they have the Saburo. The Saburo is the mama drum. That's a female drum, but that's the leader of the band. <laughs> that's crazy. That's the leader of the group. That's the one who makes the commands to tell you which way we going, which rhythm mm. we playing, <clears throat> what break we going to use, or how fast we going to go. Are we going to slow this down through the drum? No, not through your mouth, through mm -hmm. the signals on the drum. That's the saburo. And the saburo look is more feminine, too. It's longer. It's got a, like a, a sleek look to it. Kutitiba, the daddy drum, is fatter. It's got a bigger head, bigger body, and then Dingo is a small baby drum. And when, when we play some of the music from the Kutiro, you, you can hear the relationship of them all. Then we have other drums, just like the Bata drums. The Bata drums from Nigeria originally, but they also play in, in, in Cuba. They have the Iyai, Konkolo, Itotole. They have those three drums the same way. The Iya is the mama. You see, the totale and in, in, in the the Konkolo is the, the 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 responding drums. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we get information and we run with it. And for some reason, I don't know why they I guess I could know why. They 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 really did the 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 our women, our, our sacred women bad. I, I know that for a fact. I feel bad. Cause I mean, I got so many clients now that's female and they doing some good work. They mm. out there protesting. They out there, people call them to be a part of rallies. Uh, they come to my classes and I tell these stories to them and some of them not even aware that it was like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, and then a lot of things I'm learning on the fly too, because just like at camp, we ran into different things at camp that we wasn't expecting yeah. that was, you know, like stuff we weren't used to. And we had to kind of figure it out how to and be inclusive and, and get things going and make everybody feel comfortable. And, you know, we have a lot of work to do, but the drums definitely have different sounds. Now you have the drums from Guinea with the djembe. The djembe mm -hmm. have drums too. And that's the one I know that you probably referring to too. It's the right. ones that I brought. There was the bass drums with the two sticks you play with. And we had a uh, 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 dunumba, which is the daddy drum. Now, in this case, the daddy drum was the biggest and the dominant one. Then we had the the the, uh, the uh, sangba. The sangba is the middle drum. That's the female drum. And then we had the kinkini. The kinkini is the small baby drum. In the traditional way you play them, each one of those have a bell on top of it, and the bell is the timekeeper. Now. Mm. What I was always taught back with Atukwe, my first drum teacher, the bell was the most important instrument in the ensemble. Mm. It wasn't the drum. It wasn't the soloist. The solos was the least uh, interesting one. The people are doing the solo. See, in our culture, everybody that's out front and got the nice clothes, <laughs> the nice car, talking too much, playing loud, screaming on the drums, those are what everybody migrate to. That's the kind of culture we live in. Mm -hmm. But the accompaniments, they could give a damn about. Same mm -hmm. with uh, when we were growing up and I was playing in the band. They put my butt way back there by the curtain and you can <laughs> hardly see me. And everybody said, right. where's the drum at? He's back there. You hear him, right? And you can't see him. Because, but look at the yeah. bands now. Look at it now. Mm -hmm. they, get, they, they reverse. Now they realize how profound drums are in right. general, not just culturally. Even with funk, with, with, with jazz, mm -hmm. drummers right in the front. People want to see the drums. They connect with the heartbeat of the drum. So the, I, I mentioned three sets of drum, Bata, Kutero, and Dunu, that for sure have different <clears throat> families. In the mm -hmm. Shekere, same. I go go bells, I go go gui. They also have different size bells that represent male, female and the child, it's always family. Mm -hmm. And the drums that recognize family are usually more profound in the ensemble than individualistic drums, when people just right. come and play anything they want. 
Mm. That's beautiful, you know. And, and again, um, it, it even in the drumming. I mean, it, drumming is an integral part of of, of who, all indigenous people. But it's 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 really interesting that it's related to family, that it is that that male and female energy, but that child energy as well. And and you know, and it's again the importance of playing together. Of, of, of really that rhythm together. Let's let's listen to a sample of that of, of the of the three drums playing together and and see if you can feel that energy that energy of of the three drums and the other drums too. But but that family rhythm that comes together. I think you know that's where we really need to do some work as a society. How is it that we can bring the rhythms of different people together in order to play as one? Let's let's listen and and, and uh, see if we can hear that. So you know, we we begin now to to think to to understand that you know the the medicine that comes through the drum, is 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 very profound, and you know, I, as we're thinking about all this, and and you know, you were talking about how kids, you work with kids that are all over the place and non-focused, and and uh, and you you play that drum and get them to play drums, and they begin to calm down and cooperate. Now, I'm just wondering, man, can, can you drum with some of our politicians, dude? Can you bring them together and, uh, you know, maybe get them to drum together so we could bring some peace and harmony here? Because, you know, and I, and I think, you know, I'm laughing because of that, but I, I really believe our ancestors, you know, one of the medicines that they had is, is bringing people together around a rhythm, around a, a unified force, and and rather than talking everything through, which is important too, sometimes the problems are much deeper than the spoken word. It really is about you know how do we build a rhythm together that way, you know. So so um, you know as we begin to finish today, um, I, I want to ask you as a Baba, as an elder, as a master teacher, uh, if you could give some counsel or some advice. Uh, you, you've traveled and sat with in ceremony uh, with some, you know, very very wise and experienced teachers, medicine people, drummers, people that carry knowledge. Um, but you are now sitting in that position. We see you as an elder. We see you as a, a baba. We see you as as an OG uh, that that has learned. And I know that life hasn't been easy. You know, you've had to get to some difficult things. But I, I really want to appreciate you that you didn't give up, that you didn't stop carrying your medicine. But I was wondering if you could leave us with some, some counsel and points of advice for this next generation, or maybe for us too. I mean, all of us are still learning. But if you could leave us with what you have learned are significant in life that we need to get back to, we need to reroute. Uh, can you share some teach, a few teachings with us of what you think uh, in terms of advice? Absolutely. <clears throat> well, one big thing that I think and I share with people on a daily, it's almost like traffic or noise. You can hear a lot of noise and you can't really hear in the noise what it is you're trying to hear. Or you could be mm. in traffic and you can see a lot of traffic going on and you can't figure out which way I should go. Or people could be in a room and nobody's really listening to each other because everybody's talking at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, or even in your thoughts, you can have so many things in your thoughts going that you can't really focus your attention on where you are. My thing is, I think, is in order to get a better uh, connection with those things that you wouldn't normally have a connection with, you got to have a quiet space in your mm. being to receive it. The, the ancestors would be knocking on your door every day saying, I'm here waiting on you, bro. Can you just mm. let me in? 
Mm. But you won't let them in because you rather be a paying attention to all the noise that's around you. And it's not noise like you hear noise, people banging on things. It's, it's in your head. It's almost like you're not quiet enough to see or let the ancestors come to you. That's why sometimes you get real quiet and you be still enough and some to come to you and say, oh, you know, this is what I should be doing mm. or not what my mind is telling me I should be doing. Mm. This is what I was quiet enough to see what my next step should be or yeah. something to that effect. So mm -hmm. I would say that being present in the moment, even if it's with your neighbor, even if it's with your elder neighbor, like I do that all the time, <clears throat> you know, talking to the neighbors, uh, do you need anything? Not because of COVID. No, this is this is my life, bro. Oh. I mean, I'm I'm asking them questions, and then what they end up saying to me a lot of times is, Moshe, you like if I didn't play drums or something for a while, Moshe, what you, you guys not drumming no more? You know, you mm. know they it ain't that. It, I, it stop playing those drums. You know why they yeah. act like that? Because you're kind, mm. because you're nice, because oh. you speak, because you share a pastry because you ask them, you want me to bring your coffee? So these are starts with the human energy. And when things are a little uncomfortable for you, don't run away. Oh. This ain't your culture, but stay there and be present with someone that wants to share with you. Mm. And since we're talking about drums and things like that, music absolutely is a great gift to all of us. The, the world we're living in right now, it ain't just start happening. It's been going on since the beginning. Yeah. They don't want you to drum. They don't want you to be in harmony. They don't want you to get together. What they want you to do is what they're doing right now. Yeah. The brothers killing the brothers. Uh, people don't get along. All of our leaders are all in chaos. So people run home to look at CNN and all these things. Now, I don't say you should look at it, but if you got a perspective, it's easier for you. But if you're just being guided in these ways, it doesn't help you. So we're not getting the support that we need. Even brothers like me and some of the uh, organizations you work in and all that, we don't get all the yeah. support we need. We need to That's be, right. just like you mentioned something about uh, what can we do to help the situation, the politicians, whatever. We used to get invited to Apple, to Google every now and then. And we do these big drum circles and different mm -hmm. things. A lot less of that is happening now. Not just now. I mean, for a long time. We used to get invited. They give you all the food and everything. And you sit the people around. And they weren't drummers, but they got a chance to uh, connect with the vibration of drums and the positivity of what that did for you while you was in that situation. And that could bring you to a situation where you could become a better person. You could become a better listener. You could see the, the those that are more disenfranchised and underserved and, you know, where the needs are at because you can slow yourself down, feel the vibration, and, you know, come forward in a different way. Because it's mm -hmm. definitely challenging right now. Yeah. You know, we, we are needed more now, I would say, than ever. You yeah. see, so mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, no, you know, you know, um, you know. I just, I just want to thank you, and and you, you mentioned, you know, that music and and those rhythms and and sitting like that makes you a better person, and and you know, I just want to acknowledge you because sitting with you, you know, um, playing those drums with you, uh, uh, talking with you has made me a better person. Has has uh, you know really uh, acknowledged the connection that we have as people, indigenous people, you know. And, and um, so, you know, I, I want to just offer blessings to you and your family. I want to encourage people, you know, uh, you know, Baba Moshe has been doing this for a long time. And, you know, but, but as you were saying, you know, you know, people need support too. And so if there's any funders out there listening, any people got some money, <laughs> we, yeah. need, we need support, you know, and, and especially musicians and artists need support. If there's any support that you have, if there's any way that you could support 
local musicians and local artists, please do that because that is the medicine we need right now. That's the medicine we need. You know, I, I want to acknowledge you, Baba, along with all the Brotherhood of Elders and you know, Baba Greg and those and you know, Baba Arn, all, all of them that, that we've been able to sit with and, and share music. We've, we've been able to share each other's drum music, each other's chanting, each other's singing, each other's prayers. And I believe that's helping to heal the world, you know. And, and so I just want to thank you again. And, uh, you know, I want, to, I want to encourage the audience, you know, look up uh, uh, Baba Moshe and, uh, and uh, you know, listen to his rhythms, man. They, they can heal you, you know, and, and offer prayers uh, that way and send good energy that way because we need an elder l like him. We need other elders like that to continue sharing the teachings and, and sharing the, the, the medicine that way because that's what's going to heal this world, you know. I invite you to uh, continue listening to the podcast, you know, give us some reviews, um, share it with others, and, you know, and, and as we move forward, make sure you connect with your drum. Make sure you bring happy, uh, uh, positive, healing music to your life. Play that music in your home, you know. But more than anything, um, you know, do it with intention of, of love and of healing. Thank you all very much, and uh, may you have a, a blessed day. For more information about Healing Generations and the Healing Generations Institute, visit nationalcompadresnetwork.org and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with our new releases.